acquaintanceship with great musicians. As my old friend Mill Holland always said, don't, don't ever play alone. You know, you start in one place, you end up in the same place. It's like going around in a circle all the time. But to me, Galvan, when I heard him, I said, this is a real electric guitar player. This is a, a person who understands what this instrument is for. Somebody who plays the instrument as it, I think, was created. In the 50s, electric guitar was coming into itself from a primitive idea to something very grand and, and beautiful, really, you know, very interesting sound. So this is uh, hard to find now, but we have an age that we can remember these things and understand the true purpose of the instrument, which is very beautiful, I think. So there has to be beauty there, and character and personality, you know? fuentes, que imagínate tú, yo empecé la música, o sea, a tocar la guitarra desde los nueve años. En, tu, en mi pueblo, Jibar Oriente, estuve con un grupo de aficionados hasta que se formó la Orquesta Villa Blanca en 1944, que tocaba la guitarra, la guitarra acústica, en los bailes de campo cuando no había piano. Entonces cuando había piano tocaba batería. Estuve en esa orquesta hasta 1956. Me decidí trasladarme a La Habana. Trabajé con distintas agrupaciones, tuve programas de radio, hasta que empecé con Los Zafiros, en 1963. Tuve 10 años con los zafiros, un grupo que <coughs> subió como la espuma, grandioso. Era una innovación, eh, no solamente en Cuba, en el mundo. The Zafiros was the first time I had ever heard quartet singing which I associated with black music and gospel music in the United States. It was the first time I'd ever heard the quartet in Spanish. And it's certainly the first time I'd ever heard electric guitar in Cuban music. We don't ever hear this. Electric and Cuban don't, don't seem to be this, the typical thing. So then you have two unusual things. You have quartet and electric guitar playing the counterpoint and the sort of trace part and the rhythm. And, and the whole thing is, is like magic. It's like a brand new sound. So that pulls your ear. We, we know the song and we know mambo and we know some of these older forms. Okay, Danzon. But this is a thing I had never heard before. The first question was automatically, who is this playing the electric guitar this way? And so we have very little information about Zafiros. Just listening and not knowing anything about any of their names or who they really were or, or who wrote the songs and certainly not who Galban was until I saw those black and white film clips and then you see him and you see them and the whole thing is revealed. Sabes bien que yo te quiero, sabes 
sabes bien que yo te adoro, sabes bien que ya no puedo vivir sin ti. Of course, the Zafiros are totally unusual on record. It's unique on record. I've learned from Galban that there were other vocal quartets, but we never knew this. We on the outside. So when you hear the Zafiros, it's as though you're hearing a, a thing for the first time, a thing you've never heard before. We always hear the rhythm and blues famous groups of the 50s in the United States, and they have guitar, often it's electric, little rhythm section. But you'd never hear the guitar this vivid and this active. In those records, it was strumming the chord, uh, root chord just lay a pad under the voice. But Galvan plays a counterpoint, he plays bass lines, and of course, being Cuban, he plays trace lines, what I hear is trace lines, underneath rhythm and blues singing, so it's a fantastic synthesis, it's a fantastic combination, and very appealing, and so this is like an ideal music, you might say. This is something you would wish to hear, you wouldn't expect to hear, see. No me interesa que la gente me si yo he nacido para bailar la rumba y cuando siento el sonar de la tumba salgo bailando yo soy de raza entera salgo bailando yo soy de raza entera no me interesa que la gente me critique si yo he nacido para bailar la rumba y cuando siento el sonar de la tumba salgo bailando yo soy de raza entera Entonces, después de los zafiros, hice el grupo Batey. Y tuve 23 años con el grupo, el grupo Batey, en el cual viajé cuatro continentes. Ya en 1997 decidí no trabajar más en, en lo que era en, en grupos y eso. Como yo soy me, mecánico afinador de piano, Digo, bueno, me dice mi señora Magda y mi hija, papi, mira, tú con, afinando piano aquí, vamos viviendo bien. Entonces una noche yo andando mi coche, te, fue a mi casa Juan de Marco, Nicole y, y Rain Frer, que Ray Kuder se interesaba que me localizaran porque quería que grabara algo con Buenavista y con él. Y así fue en marzo de 1998. Grabé con Omar, Ibrahim, Rubén González, Ray y la orquesta Buenavista. Grabé como cuatro temas, se grabamos dos números de los zafiros. Yo tengo una gran satisfacción. to be ready when it's time. That's the most important thing. So I started thinking about recording with Galban during the uh, Ibrahim Ferrer record, but I knew this is going to take me a little while to get to where I can think through this and work through this, and then maybe we can go beyond the form, because it's useless to just repeat things and go over classic music. It's all already been done. So, but I have to really speed up the process of my own mind. You know, we can't I'm not from there. I don't have the lifetime spent with this music. So we, we're saying this is the product. This record is a product of now five, six years of pretty intense study, you know. And you have to aim yourself at the future. <laughs> Entonces, el problema es que yo siento tanto la música 
que cuando yo voy a tocar, a mí se me olvida todo. Cualquier problema, cualquier eso, se me olvida todo. Lo siento. Entonces yo toco, entonces cuando termino, siempre me ha gustado hacer las cosas lo mejor posible. Con mucho corazón. Este disco que hemos hecho ha sido así, trabajando mucho con Ray. Nos pusimos de acuerdo siempre, resolvimos todo. instrumental record is is very difficult because it's not so easy to replace voice and everybody's used to the voice and everybody expects the voice and anticipates it and that's what they're listening to all the time so you take it away and there's a strange question what is what's going to happen now so the instrumental is the the obligation is to make something that 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 interests you that 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 intrigues you you know that has some charm that takes you here and there Well, that's a tall order. The need is for space. The need is for uh, visual, uh, pictorial. What does this suggest, you know? Are, are you happy? Are you sad? Are you moving fast? Are you sitting quietly? You know, so it's a state of mind. And what that means to me is a fantasy. Of course, for me, I, I know that I grew up with records like this. Now, music in the 50s, life was a little slower tempo, it's fair to say. But if you look at the cover of this record, you've got a 59 Cadillac tail fin, right? What is that? It's an industrial fantasy. Harley Earl that designed the Cadillacs from 49 to 59, what he was saying was, this is not the car that goes to the grocery store. This is not the car you get in and go to the, the dry cleaners. You don't do that in a Cadillac. You sit in a Cadillac, you are somebody different. You're transported from the mundane to the fantastic. And if you don't believe it, look at that tail fin. Absolute fantasy. The music sang the same thing. <laughs> 